Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem I got from one of my subscribers and here's the problem. Phenylketonuria or PKU is human hereditary disease resulting from the inability of the body to process the chemical phenylalanine which is contained in the protein that we eat. About 5 people per 1000 are carriers of PKU. Sarah and James have never heard of PKU and were shocked to discover that their first child, John, had PKU. Sarah's identical twin sister, Mary, and her husband, Frank, are planning to have a child. Pedigree of Frank's family has no known cases of PKU. And here are the four questions that we have to answer. In order to solve this problem, we have to start with building a pedigree for this family. So what we know, we know that Sarah and her husband, James, have a child whose name John, who has PQ. So he is a Sarah, he is a James. So let's put S on top, James here. And they have a son with PQ, whose name is John. So also J here. And he is affected with this genetic disorder. So we for sure know his genotype, which is small a, small a. This instantly, let me use different colors, small a, small a, that instantly give us information that genotype of the Sarah is capital A, small a, and her husband James is also capital A and small a. What else we know about this family? We know that Sarah has identical twin sister, Mary. So let's put this connection here, identical sister, Mary. And they have, of course, parents, so let's say father here and mother here. And this is how we specify identical twins on the pedigree. And of course, because they're identical twins, they have to have identical genotype. So genotype of the uh, Mary is going to be capital A and small a, the same as in Sarah. Mary is married and her husband, Frank, so he is a husband Frank, let's put F here, and so far this pedigree represents everything we know about this family. Now let's answer the questions. And the first question, what are the genotypes of Sarah and James, Mary and Frank respectively? Sarah and James, we know for sure they are obligate carriers because they have affected child. So they have to be carriers. So we know for sure the genotype. We also show about the genotype of the Sarah's sister, Mary, because she is identical twin of the Sarah. So she also have to be obligate carrier. Now, what about Frank? And according to our problem, take a look. The occurrence of this genetic disorder, not genetic disorder, but we know uh, from our problem that carriers are 5 per 1000 people, or we also can say 1 per 200 people. So probability that Frank belongs to the genotype which is capital A, small a is going to be 1 out of 200. And his probability of being of the normal genotype, capital A and capital A is going to be 1, oh sorry, 199 out of 200. And we know that he is not affected, so we do not include in our probability his probability of being affected, otherwise we would know that he is affected. So he only can be with a carrier or normal, phenotypically and genotypically normal, and probability of such an event is much, much higher, almost 200 times higher than his probability of being a carrier. So our answer to the first question would be 100% carrier for James, 100% carrier for Sarah, 100% carrier for Mary, and 1 of 200 probability for Frank to be a carrier, and 199 out of 200 probability for Frank to be phenotypically and genotypically normal. Now let's answer second question. What is the probability that second child of Sarah and James will have PKU? And the answer is going to be very easy. So here's a genotype of the 
Mary, here is the genotype of the James, and when we build a simple Punnett square, we can answer this question. So capital A, capital A here, capital A, small a here, capital A, small a here, and small a, small a here. As you see, probability for the second child to be affected would be one quarter. And this is going to be an answer to this question. Now let's move to the third question. What is the probability that the first child of Mary and Frank will have PQ? So Mary and Frank, and what is the probability that the unborn child, so future child, and we use the sign to specify that the gender is not known. But for this genetic disorder, the gender is not important because it affects both males and females. This is not sex-linked genetic disorder. It is autosomal, autosomal recessive. So parents both phenotypically normal. But we know that Mary obligate carrier. So we can say that her genotype is 100% carrier. One over one is 100%. And they may have affected children only if Frank also would be carrier. So let's put capital A small a here. And they only may have affected children if her husband Frank also would be carrier. One out of 200. But even if they are going to be both carriers, probability that their first child would be a carrier would be one out of four. So we also have to include this in our calculation. So we have to multiply by one quarter probability that the child would be homozygous recessive. And as you see, probability for the first child to be affected with this genetic disorder is going to be one out of eight hundred. And this is going to be an answer to the third question. One out of eight hundred. And the last question, Sarah and James are worried about their grandchildren from John, from John, will have PQ. What is the risk that one of their grandchildren from John will have PQ? Take a look. John is affected child. So he has this genetic disorder. So he is 100% or 1 over 1 belong to this genotype. And in order for him to have affected children, he have to meet also another person, female, whose genotype is going to be carrier. Otherwise, if his wife would be homozygous normal, there is no chance that they would have affected child. And in population, the probability would be 1 out of 200. And in this case, the probability that they would have affected child would be 50%. I don't have much space left to build another Punnett square, but imagine we have to build a Punnett square where on the one side we will have small a, small a, and on the other side we will have capital A and small a. And you will find that 50% of the progeny are going to be small a, small a, and 50% of the progeny are going to be uh, capital A and small a. So 50% would be affected and 50% of the progeny would be carriers, no any other variants. So if you now think that we have to multiply by one half, just like in our previous calculations, this is very tricky question. This is not something we have to do because read this question again. Sarah and James, Sarah and James are worried that their grandchildren from John, from John will have PQ. What is the risk that uh, one of their grandchildren from John will have PQ? And this question not about the first child. If the question would be about first child, then we have to multiply by one half. But this is just a question in general, like theoretical. What is the theoretical probability? This question about theoretical probability for John, who is homozygous recessive to meet a woman who is carrier. And in this case, they may have children who would be affected. So 
our answer to this question is going to be 1 of 200. Because we don't know how many children they may have. If the question would be that the first child would be affected, then we have to multiply by one half. But because this is not specified, this question just about probability of the John to meet a woman who is going to be a carrier. And in this case, they may have children who can be affected. And this is going to be an answer. This is tricky question. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.